Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Mm. I already shared some. Uh, it's sunny in Philadelphia. Um, clips on my wall on Facebook for those of us who don't have Valentine's today. Um, but uh, I still am getting notifications from various political groups that I, I'm involved in about uh, updates with various races. And this is an update on the U.S. Senate seat that uh, presumably Feinstein will not be running for. <laughs> but we really don't know because uh, she would be 91. <clears throat> and... Um, She's experiencing, she's, she's displaying signs of dementia. So we don't know where she's going to land and whether or not the people around her are good enough to actually advise her properly or if they're going to take advantage of her for whatever jobs they might get out of it. Which is why Nancy Pelosi issued such a, a very strange endorsement of Adam Schiff that it would be in the event that Feinstein doesn't run. Well, I think most of us think it would be absolutely ridiculous for Feinstein to run again because she is clearly aging to the point where she is no longer a useful representative of California. All right, so here, here we go. This is in Vanity Fair. It will be bruising. Jockeying for Dianne Feinstein's California Senate seat has already begun. With heavy hitters like Adam Schiff, Katie Porter, and Barbara Lee. Um, it's interesting they put them in that order. Okay. Waiting in the wings, party insiders say the showdown is destined to be one for the ages. Democrat on Democrat contests are ugly and expensive. One strategist tells Vanity Fair. And this isn't just any Senate seat. This is California by Abigail Tracy, February 13th. Oh, so this came out yesterday. Um, yeah, it does. And I'm, uh, you know, I live in one of the most hotly contested congressional areas in the country. We have, we flipped three districts that are all that I either lived in or was less than five minutes away or 10 minutes away. So we have one of the, by the way, I just had a discussion last night with a friend about the results of the assembly district delegates and the voter turnout was incredibly low. Had I known it was going to be that low, I would have put my name in the hat. I didn't want the stress of running for assembly district delegate, but it was the the turnout for assembly district delegate election voters was fucking shameful. And I would blame that entirely on party leadership. I'm sorry, Rusty, but that, that ballot was fucking insane. It was an insane process this year. It was ridiculously complicated, and the voter turnout shows that that was completely unsuccessful to get party representation. There are people who won de delegate seats who had less than 20 votes. It's fucking insane that it, it went down like that. All right. <clears throat> The 89-year-old Dianne Feinstein still hasn't abandoned the possibility of a re-election bid. <laughs> but as far as California is concerned, the race is on. It is happening. Los Angeles-based progressive strategist Anna Barr told Vanity Fair. I don't know who that is. I don't know what makes her a progressive. I've never heard of her before. All right, um, two House Democrats, Orange County's Katie Porter and San Gabriel Valley's Adam Schiff. I thought his, I thought he was in Hollywood. Maybe I'm mistaking 
who uh, my co-team lead said had an office in Hollywood. Maybe I'm confusing this. I thought San Gabriel Valley. Okay. Have already officially entered the race. Others are waiting in the wings. Barr predicts a messy elbows out race given the state's top two pri primary system in which Californians can cast votes for anyone regardless of party registration and the state's expensive media market. So just, just to explain that, we have jungle primaries in California, meaning it's top two advance, period. You can vote for anybody regardless of party and the top two advance. Let me scroll back up to this picture. The people who in this picture have actually announced are Katie and Adam. But they also included Barbara Lee, who we anticipate she will announce this month. They included Feinstein, who we're assuming party leadership is going to convince her not to run because she's too old to do it and, and her mental health is declining. They've included Nancy Pelosi. She's not going to run for it. Why would they put her in because she and, and, and they prominently featured Adam Schiff at. Okay, so there's no bias here in this article, right? But they also threw in Ro Khanna, which um, that would be fucking stupid. All right. The price tag of running for any viable candidate will likely be in the range of 40 to 50 million, according to several California based strategists Vanity Fair spoke to. Consider your sentence structure, y'all. Democrat on Democrat contests are ugly and expensive. And this isn't just any Senate seat, this is California. California based Political strategist Max Saibo said it will be bruising. I also don't know who that person is either. I don't know who these strategists are. <sighs> Apparently they're not doing enough outreach to grassroots. The early jacking uh, postdates a string of reports last year questioning Feinstein's fitness to serve in the Senate. Colleagues of Feinstein's have raised issues about the senator's health, specifically her memory and mental acuity, noting a deterioration relative to earlier in her career. Keep in mind, they propped up Reagan all the way through Alzheimer's towards uh, just to keep him in two terms. They announced, I want to say it was within one year of him leaving office that they announced that he had Alzheimer's. They propped that guy up. When he said, <clears throat> I, I don't recall, I totally believe him. <laughs> I don't think he did recall, y'all. <clears throat> Among Democrats, a Feinstein retirement has increasingly become a question not of if, but when. Well, has that question been going on for years? We were shocked that she ran the last time around. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's bizarre statement last week that in the event of Feinstein not seeking re-election, she would back Schiff was a testament to that. Yeah, like obviously um, Nancy is still scared of Feinstein and her allies for some reason. You would think that the Speaker of the House wouldn't ha be that fearful, but there you have it. Still, Feinstein is taking her time. A spokesperson for the California Senator said she would make a decision within the coming months. Uh, keep in mind, the California Democratic Party will be having their endorsement conference somewhere around like October or November. That's when they decide. But the pre-endorsement conferences happen a little earlier than that. And that's when, if they wanted to make a move and pull Feinstein from what's essentially the consent calendar so that she doesn't get an automatic endorsement, 
they would be making those moves over the summertime to make sure that they have enough delegates in place to challenge her automatic endorsement. They've already successfully done it once before in 2018. Okay. For the ambitious, a vacant Senate seat in the Golden State is too enticing to hold back for a near non a gener non a generarian <clears throat> a truly competitive race for an open s senate seat doesn't happen very often here it hasn't happened in a while obviously yeah because like for for those of you who are not californians pretty much um Diane Feinstein and Barbara Boxer were um holding those seats for decades Barbara Boxer at least stepped down, at which point, um, I'm trying to think of who won it initially. I think uh, Kamala Harris, I think, won the seat outright. And then when she became VP, Alex Padilla was appointed. Okay. California-based Democratic strategist, um, you notice uh, the different titlings on this democratic strategist not progressive strategist like the other two were mentioned right dan newman said in an interview given the politics of the deep blue state winning a california senate seat is essentially a lifetime job in the most exclusive club so pretty coveted and exciting he added a lot of people have been circling lining things up and Getting ready for it for a long time. Yeah, I mean, this is something that those of us in politics have been talking about for years. In fact, we thought that Feinstein would at some point retire during the last term and give Gavin Newsom the opportunity to appoint her replacement, giving that person an incumbency and name recognition before this election. But... Alas, here we are. Okay. While she has yet to make anything official, Barbara Lee has reportedly told fellow lawmakers that she intends to make a run to succeed Feinstein. When asked last month by Politico about her plans, Lee demurred. Noting her respect for Feinstein, oh God, why are you all scared of Feinstein? Why are y'all scared of Feinstein? She's going to be 91, y'all. Like, show the American people that you are responsible adults, please, the House member said. We'll let them know when I intend to go to the next step. It's really bizarre to me that all of you are like, if Feinstein doesn't run, you all should be pressuring party leadership to make sure she doesn't run and stop throwing out all these fucking nods to her because she is incapable of holding the position anymore. It is so weird to me to see that this is the echo chamber you all live in. But now's, not, uh, but now's the time not to talk about that. Okay, so she's probably throwing a hit at Katie there because Katie already announced, but she did the same thing too. She's like, assuming Feinstein won't run. Oh, my God, even. Okay, here we go. Congressman Ro Khanna told Vanity Fair that he's been honored to hear from progressives and Bernie supporters that they want me to run. He said, which means Karen Burnell. You guys. He said that he will make a decision by the second week of April. And added, I am deep, also deeply grateful for Speaker Pelosi. <laughs> see, see, you guys all think he's a fucking progressive. <laughs> you all think he's a fucking progressive. I love this. This is so funny. I am also deeply grateful for Speaker Pelosi's guidance over the years. And of course, respect her decision to weigh in on the race. You guys think this guy's a progressive? He is He's more establishment than Katie Porter is, you guys. Can't even with you guys. It's hilarious that that's how he responded. 
Okay, Feinstein's wannabe successors are going out of their way to show deference to the senior senator. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they sure are. Oh my God. The senator can take all the time she needs. She has earned that. A Schiff spokesman said of Feinstein, Schiff, this person added, wouldn't be running if we didn't feel like we had her blessing to do it. Porter struck a similar tone. Diane Feinstein is such a trailblazer for women in politics, she told Vanity Fair. Part of being a trailblazer is creating a path for others to follow. <laughs> and it is really in that spirit that I have entered into this race. See, I think Katie's messaging has been much more on point in regards to this race. Like she's she's new, she's newer to the scene than any of these other people, but she's already established that she's very effective. And she's also like, hey, um, so Feinstein, you probably shouldn't run. And thank you so much for blazing this path for me. <laughs> so good, you guys. All right. Within political circles in California, though, there has been speculation about the possibility that Feinstein would run for re-election and then resign before the, the, the... We already went through this bullshit. She was supposed to do that in the last term. Oh, my God, even. And then resign before the end of her six-year term, leaving the governor to appoint her replacement. Governor Gavin Newsom subsequently indicated that he would name a black woman to the seat with Lee viewed as the top pick in such a scenario, a notable different tack than Pelosi took. This is true. This is exact. This is what they had speculated was going to happen during this last six years. And then Feinstein just instead made a fool of herself in, in Senate, you know, incapable of holding conversations with her colleagues, unable to remember details and names and facts and um, having embarrassing moments. Like, we're already there. And here you guys are doing the same goddamn dance. He had the opportunity to, opportunity to make that appointment, but y'all just let her just continue on. It's, it's ridiculous that you haven't stepped in at this point. I can't even. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Given the stakes of an open Senate seat, the political power centers in California are girding for the battle. Progressive activists in the Golden State don't want to forfeit a Senate seat to a candidate who falls short on their approved bon bona fides. California could provide a much needed new senator, but that will hinge on whether the base of the party prevails against California's mainline Democratic establishment, which would be well represented by Adam Schiff. California-based activist Norman... Oh, God. Are you kidding me with this? You even interviewed Norman Solomon, who served as a delegate for Senator Bernie Sanders for the 2016 and 2020 Demo Democratic National Convention and said in an interview, hopefully progressive candidates don't unduly split the vote. Look, um, we saw the results, Norman. Karen, Norman... Progressive Delegates Network. We saw the results and your slates did not do well. There was very low voter turnout. Okay, I turned my ballot in. Do you have representation at the party to discuss these processes for voting and why that ballot was so fucking complicated? amazing battle lines have begun to come into focus among the two democrats officially in the mix for the senate seat by the way norman and karen are going to be pushing ro Khanna, which is a fucking mistake it should either go to katie porter or barbara lee ro Khanna would not be a, a, a good civil servant for us Battle lines have begun to come into focus among the two Democrats officially in the mix for the Senate seat. Schiff arguably cuts the best-known silhouette among potential Feinstein successors. In his announcement video, he nodded to being the manager of Trump's first impeachment 
and serving on the January 6th committee. I wish I could say the threat of MAGA extremists is over. It is not. Today's Republican Party is gutting the middle class, threatening our democracy. They aren't going to stop. We have to stop them, he said. Pelosi's quasi-endorsement certainly served as a shot in the arm for Schiff, too. Schiff's camp also released a list of dozens of other Democrats who have indicated their support for the 62-year-old lawmaker. 62 isn't all that old. Schiff was not available for an interview. His spokesperson said Pelosi's statement stood on its own. The problem is, though, that they have already, the Republicans have already created so much conspiracy theory around Schiff, around Pelosi, around Schumer, that, um, and, and they are more established older members. There is something to be said for having institutional knowledge f through experience, but there's also th something to be said for the fact that they already have a voting record that shows that they are more centrist and they appease Republicans more than they should. And so the scenario for that insurrection was set up partially because of their acquiescence to the Republican Party. And the fact that they won't stand up to them um, is, is going to be a challenge for us. Like when the Republicans have control of the House and control of the Senate, they ram through their legislation. We have had the opportunities to push forward real change and y'all just fucking waffle and, and, and pander to the Republicans. Okay. Porter, meanwhile, is setting herself up as a political outsider. She's not from the establishment. She spent her career for this movement where authenticity is key. A Porter strategist said in an interview, and by the way, as a local, I can tell you that's absolutely true. Like, we even have a hard time here with um, our local party leaders not really cooperating with her. Okay? She is a political outsider, for, for real. And she's able to win red districts. But um, we have political leadership here in Orange County that allowed a hit, a hit campaign to go up against her unchecked from another endorsed candidate. And I find that completely unacceptable. But yeah, it does establish that she absolutely is a political outsider, despite the fact that she's already in her third term as a congressperson. In a sense, the fact that Pelosi and a large swath of the Democratic caucus have lined up behind Schiff fits with Porter's pitch that she's unbeholden to the party establishment. I can vouch for this, you guys. Like, I'm, I'm totally, I've been observing these party operations for years now. And that is absolutely true. Now, she does do everything she can to, like, get her own delegates into the party. But for the most part, party leadership does not, they're not helping her out that much. I, I've been watching this for years, you guys. I think I have a strong track record in my short term time in Congress of standing up to special interests, of being willing to call out corrupt politicians, to call out corporations that are cheating Americans, corrupt government officials, Porter told Vanity Fair. Now in her second term, no, it's her, it's her third term. She won 2018. She won 2020. And she just won 2022. She's in her third term. Porter has carved out a somewhat niche reputation within the party. A single mother armed with a whiteboard, ready to embarrass corporate executives in hearings, who can win in a purple district. Yeah, she's won three times in purple districts. She is blunt in her Senate ambitions. Let me put it in uh, let me put it this way. The race is a good thing for California. It is important that we have people engaged and that we are giving them choices and that we are having 
a vigorous conversation about what we want these bodies, what we want the Senate and House to look like going forward. And Porter is not without her own notable endorsements either. Senator Elizabeth Warren among them. Uh, she went out of the gates in 2018, uh, the 2018 race, she was endorsed by Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. But despite California's perception as a blue bastion, its politics are complicated. It is easy to overlook the reality that both Kevin McCarthy and Nancy Pelosi hail from California. I think the question is whether there is a candidate who will be able to thread the needle between a San Francisco resident and a Bakersfield resident. Barr, who has publicly come out in support of Porter, added. Okay, so Kevin McCarthy is from Bakersfield, right? So this is like Central California. The central regions, like the, the more um, rural areas of California are pretty red, you guys. And a lot of that has to do with water politics and things like they, they know which issues um, can win their districts. Like, I'll get you water for your crops, you know, stuff like that. Traditionally, Northern California candidates, Newsom Feinstein, former California Senator and now Vice President Kamala Harris, former Governor Jerry Brown, and erstwhile, is that a, an actual, I'll have to look that up, erstwhile Senator Barbara Boxer, have fared better. Newman, who has worked for Governor Newsom, said, this could be an advantage for Lee particularly if she can consolidate progressives and others frustrated that only two of the more than 2,000 senators, U.S. senators have been black women and none currently. I mean, there is something to be said for that, and she is certainly qualified. I would be perfectly happy with Barbara Lee winning this. I just think that because she's a bit more establishment, that Adam Schiff is going to cut from her vote base. I, I think that she's going to have a challenge with Adam Schiff being in the race because she does not draw from the same voter base as Katie does. Katie has won purple districts. Barbara has not. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think it would be fantastic if she won as well. And of course, there is always the possibility that a deep-pocketed Republican or Democrat light, uh, a la Rick Caruso, no. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. A California businessman who ran for L.A. mayor last year and lost to Karen Bass. Jumps in and shakes up the Senate primary. Isn't that guy broke yet after all the money he spent on that L.A. mayor's race? Both Schiff and Porter are prolific fundraisers. Only McCarthy raised more than Porter in the House. Pelosi raised the third greatest sum for a House member. <laughs> Porter, Katie Porter raised more money than Nancy Pelosi. That's pretty good, you guys. She also, by the way, on her first day, announcing raised $1.3 million, matching um, Bernie Sanders' Matching Bernie Sanders, you guys. All right. The second term congresswoman. No, she's not. She's a, This is her third term. What are you talking about? She won in 2018. She won in 2020. She won in 2022. Why is this article inaccurate? She's on her third term. What the fuck even with you guys? The second term congresswoman. Brought in about $25.6 million during the 2022 election cycle and has approximately $7.4 million on hand. Okay, so she had some rollover cash, plus she's already doing very well in her fundraising for this cycle. Schiff raised roughly $25 million and has a staggering $20.9 million in his war chest. You know, they're going to save most of this for like TV ads like right before the primary. <coughs> But they'll, they, they will also have paid canvas operations. They will. 
<clears throat> and mailers and phone banking and postcarding. And they're going to tap into um, as many volunteer clubs as they can find. While Lee is incredibly respected within the Democratic caucus and in California, her singular decision to vote no on the war in Afghanistan after 9-11 cemented her as a progressive fixture, which is great. Like I said, I like, I like Barbara Lee too. And she appears to have the governor in her corner. She doesn't boast the same fundraising chops as Schiff or Porter. Comparatively, she raised $2 million last cycle and $52,353 on hand. Okay, so she would need some serious help. <coughs> Kana could also be similarly hamstrung if he chose to run. His campaign reported raising approximately $5.8 million in the... Where are you getting your money from, Kana? In the 2022 cycle, and he has about 5.3 million to spend. That dude, by the way, is his congressional district is Silicon Valley. Um, he has taken Peter Thiel money in the past. He hobnobs with the Silicon Valley people, and the fact that he's basically in bed with Karen Brunel and Norman Solomon, um, and runs. Slate, like he endorses slates for the Progressive Caucus for CDP. He, it, it, these are some of the most toxic people I have ever met in politics. They're like some of the most toxic people I've ever met in politics. Ah. The first step for any Democrat making a bid to supplant Feinstein is surviving the primary. Being anti-Donald Trump won't be sufficient for any candidate to advance to the general election. As such, the primary will be an exercise in contrasts, if minute. I think the unanswered question is how the progressive vote or how the progressive bloc in California will shape the race. Well, I can tell you straight up, I've attended those progressive caucus calls and they don't shape shit. They are the most ineffective caucus I've ever fucking seen. They are completely performative and they get nothing done. And the issues that are discussed and debated in California, especially given the history of how moderate candidates have tended to fare better than more progressive candidates in statewide contests, contests, the Zabo said. It remains to be seen how far left the candidates will go and that will therefore see in our next senator. Well, okay, so I think that's the end of the article. I can tell you this. In the last presidential election, and in our uh, former congressional elections, everybody keeps telling us that they are down for, they are in support of Medicare for all. And the candidates who say they are not get booed off stage. That's generally how it goes. So the idea that that you can't be progressive on that issue is some bullshit. Um, the idea that you can't be progressive on a Green New Deal, on, you know, green jobs is bullshit. So I think it's unlikely that Californians are going to do the same bullshit as, you know, a lot of... Diane Feinstein's voters are no longer with us, shall we say. Like, she had a, the much older crowd. And the fact that, you know, it, it's usually older people who vote. But the older generation is dying out. You know, this is, this is also my problem with re the Republicans' um, complaints about funding Medicare, saying that we're going to have some problems in 11 years. They used to tell us that bullshit a couple decades ago. They're like... Gen X, you're going to be taxed like 40 to 50% out of your paycheck to continue maintaining this program. Well, that was supposed to happen when they all started retiring, right? They're all like in their 70s and 80s now. They're like in the, they're, they're all in their 70s and, and late 60s at this point. So we're talking about in 11 years, 
these people are going to be in late 70s, late 80s, if they're still alive. And they're probably not going to still be alive, a lot of them. So that's a, that's a false argument. Um, and that's what the Republicans are trying to do right now is be like, oh my God, it's going to be so expensive. This is the same fucking argument they brought up to us in the 90s and the early aughts to try and scare us into cut, making cuts to Medicare. It's bullshit. You can, if you can uh, find money for missiles, you can find money for government programs that keep people alive. You can, we, we don't need to look like the joke of the first world nations where everybody else has healthcare and we don't. We don't have to be the joke of the first world. That's fucking ridiculous. We do have the money and we are the only nation in the world that can actually get away with MMT. 